Three months in the nut. Freaking huge. Nut. Twisted Metal is a long-running series of car combat games that features a roster of colorful and wacky characters battling for the prize of one wish, without limit to size, value, or even reality. The beaches, babes, farm animals! The only thing standing between competitors and their deepest desires fulfilled is the complete and utter domination of everyone and everything around them by way of brutal vehicular warfare. The path to victory is treacherous and challenging. It will test every bit of your being to overcome, especially in the 2001 release Twisted Metal Black. Twisted Metal Black. Which to this day remains the darkest, most frenetic, and unforgiving entry in the series. Twisted Metal is one of the most underrated series of games, in my opinion. It's an arena brawler fighting game wrapped up in a car combat package. It seamlessly blends its high octane intensity with thoughtful mechanics and strategies that creates a gameplay experience that is endlessly rewarding and satisfying. It's a franchise let down not only by its niche genre, but also by its steep learning curve, which makes it hard for people to jump into if they aren't prepared to spend countless hours mastering its controls, mechanics, and nuance. So I want to express what it looks like when an expert gets a hold of this game, hopefully then inspire others to take on the journey of getting to that point themselves, because it's one of the most fun and rewarding experiences you can have in gaming, doubly so for Twisted Metal Black. Despite being among the highest rated and beloved Twisted Metal outings, it's not uncommon for players to hop into Black for the first time, only to be completely baffled and put off by its un unrelenting difficulty and pace. Enemies are suffocating and rarely make mistakes. Weapons are tricky and hard to get the most out of. Levels are dreary and have complicated layouts. Finding the right character to use is mostly trial and error, and may God have mercy on you if you accidentally My pick God. Brimstone. And if all of that wasn't enough, the whole thing feels stuck in a permanent fast forward. The blistering speed alone of Twisted Metal Black makes it worthy of being called the hardest game in the franchise. It may seem like it's impossible to overcome. It may seem like the game hates you and wants you to feel bad. It may seem like your closest friends and family will never respect you until you finish a playthrough of Twisted Metal Black. But what if I told you that it's not only possible to turn the tides of battle and assert your dominance over this game, but you can do it quickly, impressively, and in a way that will earn the adoration and respect of your peers and rivals. In this video, I'll break down and dissect how a speedrunner was able to beat Twisted Metal Black in under 19 minutes so that you have everything you need to take on this ruthless game. This run was performed by Lord Raiden on the easy difficulty, using manslaughter, and currently sits as the world record time for this game. So let's see how they are able to do it. There's a reason the most competitive speedrun category for Twisted Metal Black is the easy leaderboard. There's no shame in turning the challenge down just a little bit. Where other, lesser games might reserve their easy mode for sniveling toddlers who need their hands held every step of the way, Twisted Metal Black actually becomes playable on the lower setting. Of course, if you prefer a more unforgiving experience, you can absolutely crank the difficulty to your liking. But be warned that anything beyond easy is considered cruel psychological torture in most developed nations. The enemy AI becomes less aggressive and takes more damage while you, the player, receive less. It's a nice trade-off, some might call it the great equalizer, that still provides a formidable and satisfying challenge. Twisted Metal Black is home to 15 playable vehicles, each possessing their own unique traits and attributes that fit any playstyle. Determining what works best depends on your preference and how you want to play the game. For Lord Raiden's world record run, they used Manslaughter, whose defining quality is chucking rocks at unsuspecting foes, and watching as they are crumpled underfoot by his enormous ramming potential. Manslaughter Special, in addition to being wildly powerful, is among the fastest to regenerate, so you're never waiting too long before you can sling another batch of rocky destruction, or destruction, at unlucky enemies. That doesn't mean Manslaughter is the end-all, be-all meta pick, though. In fact, Lord Raiden only used Manslaughter because someone, the Doll Mask, shout out the Doll Mask, challenged them to do so. While MS is certainly a great vehicle, any character character can feasibly earn a world record, that is, with the exception of Brimstone, a car reserved for players who, in their darkest moments, are seeking masochistic pleasure. The Lord does work in mysterious... 
It comes down to picking a character that fits your playstyle and sticking with them to master the nuance and strategy associated with them. However, for this video, we'll look at how Lord Raiden used manslaughter to etch their name in the tomes of speedrunning history. If you have enjoyed this video so far, please take a moment to hit the like button to let me know, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future uploads. Loading into the first level, Junkyard, Manslaughter has a unique feature where he does not have an opening cutscene, meaning you do not need to skip anything to get into the game. For characters with an intro movie, it doesn't take any longer necessarily, you just have to remember to press a button to skip the cutscene. For most of this run, Lord Raiden will be using the meat and potatoes of this game to dispatch enemies quickly. The name of the game is gathering weapons and getting the most out of them. There are exceptions where it's faster to exploit the AI into falling into various bottomless pits of doom but the main objective is to do as much damage in as little time as possible. The Junkyard Battleground has a unique environmental pickup that will coerce a scrapped plane into pelting your opponents with a series of rockets. Lord Raiden will smash into opponents to keep them stunned just long enough for the entire attack to connect, while also delivering his rocky payload. This is the first example of tying together attacks to instantly annihilate the other cars. The special weapon will regenerate over time, but Lord Raiden will have to scavenge the level for other pickups to make the killing go faster and make the most of his encounters with enemies. Every weapon in the game has a purpose, but some are more useful than others. You'll notice Lord Raiden will gravitate towards sections of the map that have skill-based pickups, which are weapons that utilize the age-old dynamic of risk and reward, to give players a crushing armament if they can manage to time the attack perfectly. In the warehouse section of the map, Lord Raiden picks up the skill-based weapon and gas cans, two remarkably potent items. Combining skill-based weapons such as the reticle, zoomy missiles, or satellite with a dose of rock destruction is a surefire way to take even the most armored up baddies from full health to burning scrap. Here, a satellite, gas can, and rock combo dominates a thoroughly overmatched warthog while doing critical blows to Axel. Lord Raiden then collects a reticle from the crusher and immediately turns her sights on the pursuing roadkill. To get the maximum damage from the reticle attack, he needs to keep the target within the crosshairs for the entire duration of the charge-up sequence. Enemies are not always cooperative though, so he hits roadkill with the freeze missile to hold him still. But just as the attack goes off, he rams roadkill to break the freeze, because when someone is frozen, they take reduced damage. Lord Raiden finishes roadkill off and collects the newly spawned skill-based weapon from the crusher. Once again, he must time the charge up perfectly to get the most damage, so he freezes shadow, but is sure to wait until they thaw to drop the attack on them. Enemies are utterly incapable of understanding what to do when the player runs into them, so he finishes off shadow by pushing them while shooting their machine guns. Mr. Grimm barges in, but is largely a non-factor, as his low health total makes him an easy out, even if you are tight on weapon inventory. This left a still weakened Axel and Yellow Jacket. Axel fell victim to a fire missile and ram combo, but still Yellow Jacket would take a bit more, providing another opportunity to demonstrate the wicked power of manslaughter rocks, which essentially act like a shotgun, great when point blank, but hugely ineffective at range. Pressing up against Yellow Jacket is all it takes to immobilize them, leaving them open to several tons of flaming rocks being dropped on their weak ass ride. The Ram Rock Rhythm combo will be a constant refrain of this run, as it is the most consistent way of doing damage to enemies. Moving on to suburbs, we see another strategy develop that will pay off at later levels. At several points, the game forces you to choose which arena you want to take on next. In this case, it's a decision on either suburbs or freeway. Given manslaughter's pitiful speed, a map as wide open as suburbs may seem counterintuitive. However, Lord Raiden picks it because it allows him to stock up on environmental weapons that he needs to make a later level much easier. Freeway doesn't have any of those, so that leaves just suburbs to deliver what he needs. Needing to cover vast swaths of empty space to collect more weapons and get to opponents means that he must waste no time when the opportunity to kick ass presents itself. The game randomly spawns a player on the map with little consistency, but the strategy is to head to the neighborhood section as quickly as possible, as it has the most access to useful weapons and easily navigable terrain. The other areas of the arena feature fewer weapons and have hills or uneven ground that makes getting a clean shot more difficult and time-consuming. Right away, Lord Raiden targets Junkyard Dog 
Dog, with the Power Missile and Mega Gun combo. As weapons will fire from where they physically appear on the vehicle, Manslaughter's unique size and shape means that his machine guns are much further apart than they would be on other cars, meaning that it's a challenge for both machine guns to hit an enemy reliably. Despite that, Lord Raiden is able to push and manipulate Junkyard Dog into a position where both of his machine guns can hit him. A now familiar sight, we see him ram into Warthog to keep him stunned while he unloads a barrage of Zumi missiles and his rocks. A similar fate befalls Axel, who finds himself at the fiery end of one of Lord Raiden's exchanges. Continuing to patrol the streets, he gathers more weapons as the enemies approach him, reducing the time spent trying to hunt them down. The formula remains the same load up on weapons, ram into enemies to stun them, and unfurl a storm of ass kicking as they sit there helpless, with the added ingredient of picking up environmental weapons as they spawn in. Next up is Highway Loop, where Lord Raiden deploys another unique tactic. This is another fork on the Twisted Metal Road, where you can head to downtown or take your chances on Highway Loop. The major difference between the two arenas is that Highway Loop contains a bottomless pit that instantly kills anyone who falls into it. Right away, he heads to the partially raised bridge and forces Outlaw to fall between its outstretched arms, whose gap will gobble up many more people as this run continues. Lord Raiden takes advantage of some of the quirks of the enemy AI. We've seen many times how bumping into them will cause them to just sit there and let you do your thing, like a f***ed up game of Playground Freeze Deck. That is used here to push several opponents into the gaping maw of the bridge. However, there are other AI oddities that he is abusing. If he sits on the edge of the bridge and times his movements correctly, the enemies will toss themselves in without any fuss. They approach the bridge at full speed, but if he acts as if he'll cross it at the right time, the other cars will stop and attempt to turn around to chase, but their momentum will carry them into the pit. Not only does this save time on having to do damage damage to opponents, but it allows him to hold on to his weapons that are better used on later levels. Lord Raiden even managed to convince the enemies to betray their fellow AI, as Crazy 8 and Roadkill collided at the mouth of the bridge and held hands as they descended into darkness. The bridge had its fill of scrap metal for the moment, so instead of waiting for the remaining cars to drive all the way over to him, Lord Raiden ran to them instead. Short work was made of them using the same strategies as before, drop the rocks on stunned enemies, and utilize skill-based weapons to their fullest potential. This brings us to the halfway point in the game's first boss battle. Minion is a giant tanker that makes use of a magic fuck off shield that shuts off when all the panels are disabled. In casual playthroughs, it's not uncommon to struggle to take the panels out because Minion refuses to show you his back panel. But for an expert runner like Lord Raiden, this fight is trivial at best. By sitting in a corner, Minion's AI will cause him to be much more docile. He will stop and turn in place, eventually exposing every panel. So long as he outlasts his fireballs and flame hose, Lord Raiden can take down the shield and rip off a killing combo on Minion. Even though the shield stage nearly took him out, Lord Raiden could sprint away and nap some much needed zoomies, power missiles, and health, being sure to avoid incoming fireballs. Minion is much bigger than your typical tournament fodder, so pushing him around takes a hefty boy. Thankfully, Manslaughter is just such a boy. Smashing into Minion, he throws the giant tanker into the air, where the rest of his weapons can finish the fight. Smaller vehicles have an easier time with Minion in some cases because they're so small they can sort of attach themselves to his side and his flamethrower can't reach you, but with manslaughter, brute force is the best way. Lord Raiden and Minion traded lethal blows, but since Minion exploded first, Raiden's death doesn't count. Prison Passage is often the longest level in a playthrough, whether it's a speedrun or a casual, as it takes place over several sections. You have to wait for the next area to open up before you can progress. The first room is a confined space that pits you against two enemies. The doors will open into the next area when enough time has passed, or you kill both opponents, whichever comes first. Naturally, the faster option is to gale force bitch slap your foes into whimpering submission, so that's what Lord Raiden does, using the proven tactic of chucking rocks at stunned cars. The doors give way to the expanded section that reveals we've been on a boat this whole time. Two more enemies emerge. No matter how quickly you take them out, the boat must sail the friendly seas and dock into port before the rest of the map can be accessed. It's effectively an auto-scroll segment, but it does help to kill the enemy sooner rather than later, as clearing the boat lets you gather more weapons without pesky baddies getting in your way. There are no surprises here, the combination of rocks, reticles, and gas cans is more than enough to ravage the field. The deluge may be 
begin as soon as the gates fall, allowing passage to the next area. Junkyard Dog, Brimstone, Yellow Jacket, and Axel were failed as fast as one might squish a bug, using the tried and true recipe of mayhem. Gas cans, power missiles, rocks, skill-based weapons, and mega guns all conspire to bring a wave of violence unknown even to the hellish world of Twisted Metal Black. The choice between Snowy Roads and Drive-In Movie is no different than the decision between getting a cone of ice cream and getting windmill kicked in the groin. One is a nice treat and the other will ruin your day. This is what all those environmental pickups Lord Raiden has been saving are for. Snowy Roads is a congested, frost-covered hodgepodge of buffoonery. Still, it features a storm cloud that can be activated with the environmental weapon, causing it to smite opponents with the heavenly blast of electrified horror. Arriving at Snowy Roads with at least five environmental weapons will ensure that the storm cloud does much of the work. The only catch is that enemies must be on the side of the map where that cloud is. Due to the easy difficulty making opponents less aggressive, keeping them under the lightning is as simple as staying on the opposite side of the arena. Usually only one enemy will engage you while the rest stay far away. Lord Raiden spams the fire button, unleashing the deafening roar of Thor's might, as enemy health bars dwindle to nearly nothing. Once the lightning runs out and the enemy cars are aware of his games, Lord Raiden will start to clean up the remaining cars. Many of which are feebly puttering along. Past this point, there is no special tricks on this map, just good, honest shooting. Now that brings us to the final traditional battle of the game, an intense dust up on the rooftops of the abandoned skyscrapers. When there is a bottomless pit, into which opponents can be hurled against their will, Manslaughter is there to feed it. After taking out Darkseid the old-fashioned way, Lord Raiden drops onto the lower level, near the Wrecking Ball Bridge. There, he can manipulate the AI into being easy marks for his signature brand of Demolition Derby. After watching Crazy 8 speed down the bridge, he holds Axel in place until Crazy 8 turns around. At that point, he lets Axel go and watches them bump each other off the platform into the yawning abyss below. It's a ridiculous maneuver, but that's what world records are made of. Expert executed bullshit. If you ask him, he'll say it was completely luck, but I'm not convinced. We, we settled on it being a happy accident. Staying on the bridge, he coaxes more wandering foes towards him, like a siren song to their doom. Warthog and Spectre take the bait and join him. Freezing opponents makes them extra slippery when pushed, making it much easier to knock them into the void. This can be seen with both enemies, as Lord Raiden cleanly got them to fall to their demise with a simple freeze bump wombo combo. With only two enemies left, it only took tracking them down and doing to them what has been done many times before, delivering a rocky load onto opponents' heads, to move us on to the final boss fight with Warhawk. Despite spending the entire game up to this point against opponents and various types of wheeled vehicles bound to the earth by the pull of gravity, the final test of our skill in the tournament was versus a literal flying machine named Warhawk. It's a bizarre changeup for the game, but it must be overcome to complete the contest. Like Minion, this boss has a magic shield that prevents damage until some arbitrary task is completed. In this case, tankers drive onto the playable area looking like a diet Minion and must be destroyed near Warhawk thereby hurting the shield. Rinse and repeat three times, and the shield goes down and the helicopter can be hit directly. The first tanker doesn't enter the arena right away, so Lord Raiden spends the opening seconds collecting weapons to use on them as soon as they jump down. Homing missiles are used while the tankers are in the air because of their superior tracking, but once the tankers are on the ground, he switches to the more powerful fire missiles and mega guns. Once disabled, Lord Raiden pushes the tankers into position before fully destroying them. When three tankers are destroyed and the shield is down, he drives directly underneath Warhawk and launches the Rocks of Doom into his front spikes, instantly evaporating the heli's hit points. The clock stops when the first frame of black plays after Warhawk is destroyed. So that's how a speedrunner beat Twisted Metal Black in under 19 minutes. Tell me in the comments below what you think. I hope you can find the people, things, and activities around you that make you happy, healthy, and kind. Your darkest moments don't define you, and there's always a tomorrow. I'll catch you next time, and have a nice day.